finish the blanket, I did the three rows where there's one, two, three, three rows with the little popcorn stitch. But the popcorn, I only did three of the little stitches. So on the edge, I'm doing a popcorn of five to where it's more poppy on the edges. I'm just a little afraid that this one stitch up top might be like too tight, but I mean, if I pull at it, it seems fine. So it might, it might work out, but I'm also using the double crochet stitch rather than the like in between stitch just because it's easier to work with because um, if I go in between the stitches there's more room than putting all five of those uh, double crochets in this one tiny little stitch so I think we'll keep working at it and see see where it goes so all this little pops little popcorn pops so one, two, three, four, five, double crochet, and then I'm dropping this to go in, in the stitch of the first one to pull, pull this back through and single crochet. So double crochet. Trying to go slow for you to understand what I'm doing. Get some more yarn, it's kind of stuck. two, three, four, five. So hold off, grab this single crochet and go to the next one, which I guess is right here. So five double crochet in this one. So pretty much I'm just going to go along this whole row. When I get down here at the end, I'm going to kind of make it a little bit so that I can round the corner. Um, so I did that with this corner here. So I've got two double crochets in there in this corner so that I was able to kind of make this corner wider and round it all around. So got a few little popcorns here and this is the same blanket with the little popcorns um, they aren't very apparent there's kind of like little pops little pops out with the blanket that I was working on a long time ago that I just picked back up to try to finish so that I could uh, either sell it or give it away so we'll see what happens with this one So I do try to sell these blankets, but sometimes I, I give them away. I don't have to keep everything I make, but I do like making stuff. And it is helpful when you at least get a return on your yarn that you invested in.
wasn't really sure whether I wanted to go in this little hole or just skip on over to this one. So, I don't know. There's some where it's like a little tricky whether or not you want to add it in there, but it's not going to hurt it to add it in there. And I don't know, it might create too much of a space if I don't. So, we'll do it. One, two, three, four, five. This, over this, pull it together. My hand here kind of brings the tension with the yarn, so sometimes I undo it and redo it so that I get a better tension for my yarn. It also depends on how big the stitches are, if it's too loose or too tight. I tend to crochet pretty tight. Because that is a pretty big gap. So, mm, compared to these other gaps, that one seems a little too big. So I might, I might take this one out and go for the stitch. Let's see, let's see how the little popcorn works. Eh, yeah, it's kind of too much space there. So we'll just, we'll pull it out and uh, go in here. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you just gotta pull out your stitches because it didn't work right or you weren't paying attention and pulled something that you weren't supposed to pull and hopefully that works out okay but sometimes it doesn't. So what I was talking about with every other is there are these more open stitches that have the double crochet, but then there's also the ones in between that are tighter. And so it's like, okay, this one you're going to going to you want to go in the actual stitch that's tighter and then then you can go in to the double crochet where it's more space in there. We don't want to do too much space in our little popcorns. Or else it'll look like that other one. Okay, so I was talking, so there's one, two. Oh, see, and that's the thing too, is I pulled that a little too bad. And so I gotta pull that out so that I grab all of the threads of the yarn, not part of them. Sometimes it happens. Well, for anybody who wants to know, Dusty Striped Klimkowski has spent most of the day on this blanket right here because it's so soft and I finished it and uh, so I can kind of pull it out here without the uh, camera moving a little bit but it's just it's very soft so this is it is softer than this one but I mean it's different thread it's different yarn and that's okay. Um, but this one, the cat has been all up on top of today. And he's acting like a little 
spoiled print over there on the soft yarn. Like I made that blanket just for him. So sometimes these holes are a little too tight and so it gives me a little trouble getting the yarn in and out and through the hook. So with this one, the yarn, one, two, three, four, five. So that's five of them all in that one. And that's what really makes it pop is when it's all in that one tiny little stitch and then you pull them all together because it's got a tighter, tighter area. These other ones are pretty good too, but the ones where the area is more than in here, it kind of, it's wider and not as like defined, I guess. But it happens. Do you guys have any people, maybe you or somebody you know, who they're they're pregnant and they're going to have a baby soon. Maybe you want to get them a blanket. A personalized blanket crocheted by Crane Crochet. And honestly, it doesn't even have to be somebody who's pregnant. It could be somebody who just had a baby and you wanted to get them something special. A handmade item is definitely special, whether or not you're the person who handmade it. I don't want to jinx myself, but so far I don't think I've done six. I think I've done either four or five with the stitches and I haven't done six yet where I had to pull one out. I don't think. Which obviously if you pull one out it's no big deal. I just thought it was nice that so far I haven't had to do that. I've had to fix some stitches, but not pull one out because I made too many. So. So we've got notes of white, pink, orange, Orangish. I mean, it's kind of pink. It's a, there's a purpley pink and an orangish pink. So white, green, purple, pink. White, green, purple, pink. So it's nice, nice blanket. Probably for a girl. Most boys probably don't want it. But then again, some might. Maybe there are some who. Uh, some little boys who have sisters and they want their sister's blanket because they like it and think that they deserve it more than their sister does. It's possible. I had a cousin who wanted my baby doll. So I had a baby doll and I might have even had two that Christmas that were slightly different from each other. And my boy cousin wanted my baby doll, but he was a boy, so he shouldn't have wanted my baby doll, because it was mine. But it got sorted out. It's okay. I probably let him borrow it for a little bit and then got it back. It happens. I've heard of lots of little boys who like to take care of their baby dolls. 
and that's okay. It's always good to be caring and loving towards others. There's just a little bit more, so I'm going to turn off the video, finish this, and then come back to you. So you'll just see it in uh, one, two, three. And we're back. So what I've got here is I went all the way to the end, so I will show you what I'm doing there. I went all the way across. We've got a few gaps in there, but it's not too bad. I'm not about to count all these little popcorn stitches. If I don't have the same amount on the other side, I don't really care. It's going to be as good as it's going to get. So we went all the way down the one side with the little popcorn stitch. Then we're down here at the corner. We're about to uh, do our little popcorn with the corner and figure it out. So... Uh, let's pop corn this one. So four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So let's pop. Alright, so that is pretty much the corner. So let's go in the corner. So some people, instead of doing the five, they'll do like ten and like make it a, just a really big corner. So you know what? Let's try that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I believe that's 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Obviously, we can pull it out if we don't like it. So let's see. Will it do what we want it to do? Well, I don't know if we know what we want it to do. Because that's kind of a... Uh, it's not necessarily a popcorn because there's kind of too many stitches there. So it's kind of like a little a little rolled corner. I'm I'm okay with that. It's it's a corner. It's not quite what we were going for, so I mean technically I could probably grab this end here and kind of pull it in. make it a pop so if I did that let's see so pull I pulled that out I pulled that back out so let's do this and then this and kind of pull all of that in so it kind of closed it off kind of made it too two bigger ones. So you know what? I kind of like it better when we just grab the one end rather than in the middle too. So let's go back and just we'll we'll roll that. We'll leave the end alone. We'll we'll leave that like middle one alone. So it'll become just like a little rolled end. I'm okay with that. It's kind of cute. It's not quite popcorn, but it's definitely kind of popped, rolled out. So, we'll We'll roll with that. So these ends here are, uh, they are kind of started with a single crochet. So it's not like our double crochet edge here.
here. So with this, um, we'll go ahead and do it in this one. So we'll make the five double crochet in this one. So when I was doing the popcorn throughout, I was doing uh, popcorn, two stitches, popcorn, two stitches. But on the edge here, I wasn't doing that. But we might try that and see if it looks good, or we might try and see if uh, we need to skip every other one instead of every, like, two. So that's three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five. Grab this, pop. So one, two, in this one. That might be a little too far away. Yeah, two stitches is gonna be too far away for skipping. So you know what? We'll we'll go every other. So let's try this one. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's closer. So we'll have to do every other. Uh, which makes it a little bit longer, but it does make it look better and look more uh, symmetrical to the other side of the blanket here. So. So when I pull out the yarn, I'm usually pulling it out longer because I don't want it to like disappear or I don't want it to get sucked back in and have to redo that stitch. So I'm pulling it out so that I don't lose it. That's what I'm doing. Um, so when I go in here and un-release, uh, when I go in here and release the hook from the yarn, release the yarn from the hook. So when I go in here and release the yarn from the hook, I'm making sure that I'm gonna be able to grab it easily. So go back through this loop here, grab it, and I'm pulling it kind of drawstringing it back in so that it's tight so that I'm not increasing like the stitch and making it too too puffy or something. So I want to make sure that I don't lose it and have to redo that whole stitch and pull stuff out. So So this is the bottom of the blanket. This was the first original stitch that I did, the chain to create the blanket. And so the bottom, the chain, the original starting point does look different than the top. Um, so you've got the original chain in there plus your double crochet. So when you're going in to do your popcorn, it's definitely different and interesting as to like where you want to start your your chains there. Um, so I think what I've been doing is kind of going in right in here, kind of where that chain and the double crochet are, rather than going in 
the like single loop of where the chain had started. So I'm kind of giving them more structure, being a little more firm with where my popcorns are rather than just like hanging out on the, the single little loop of the chain. Oh, see I just dropped that one. Luckily there's enough of this loop to where I don't have to redo that chain. So we can try again and pull our single crochet. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you pull the hook through the yarn and it doesn't come with. So you just have to try again and sometimes you have to pull the yarn out to get it to where it needs to go and Sometimes it happens. So since I still have a little ways to go with this bottom row, um, and I've done I've done a pretty decent amount over here with you guys watching, um, I'll go ahead and uh, turn the video off for right now and. Uh, in a few seconds you'll see me have uh, come back all the way over here and I'll be back at this other corner over here so alrighty in just a few seconds we're still working However, the uh, GoPro that we're using is about to run out of battery. So we will need to take a short break and uh, charge the battery back up. So, Dusty, oh, stop eating my yarn. Dusty, stop eating my yarn. So we are back after the battery had died and we charged it up. And so I finished that row on the bottom, did another corner with the little, little hole, cute. And uh, we're back to doing the popcorn stitch along the side now with the double crochet where it's kind of the little double crochet where it's wider versus in the in the ones there um, where they're kind of the side with the side and the double crochets um, so we've got still this side with the double crochet to go and then back up to the top so I did not do anything with the top when I originally crocheted it I've just got that row of double crochet and I went straight into the side. So we've still got this, the double crochet and then back into the border. So we've got a, the side here doing the popcorn stitch in the side. I know that's been like just a few seconds for you, but it's been longer for me. So I crochet, but not that fast. That is the magic of technology and speeding things up, bringing it all together. I don't know if you can tell on this GoPro video, but I have like lint from this blanket all over me. So there's like lint all over my shirt.
It's rolling. I'm almost at the end here. We're going. Lots of popcorn stitches. Almost at the end of the row. Soon y'all are going to start hearing my yarn squeak because my hands are getting sweaty and then my stomach's going to start to growl. So we might have to cut that out if I uh, hear any of those noises. My husband's eating snacks over there and it's making me hungry. I try not to eat snacks while I'm working on projects, especially when I know they're going to other people. Usually pretty good about washing my hands before I come back to the project. So, Dusty Stripes has also been moving around the bed a little bit here uh, as I've worked and turned the videos on and off. So, currently, if you can't see him, he's right over there. And uh, he's been messing around with the yarn, trying to bite it, trying to claw at it. So, I think he's picked one or two little yarn spots in this blanket, but hopefully that doesn't mess it up too bad. Uh, I don't think he messed it up, just the yarn might be a little bit more picked than I had hoped for. So, we're almost there, we're almost to the end, almost ready to round the corner. So, it looks pretty good so far, not, not big gaps or anything like that. Uh, once again, we did the little corner to where the little corner looks like a, it's got a little hole in it. So that's the same as this other corner down here, where I did that to it. Um, the first corner I did does not look like that, because that's where I'm going to end. And so we'll see if, uh, if we get a similar uh, look to this corner or not. I'm not quite sure yet. But... We're, we're not quite to the end. We'll, uh, we'll be able to get there in a, in a minute. Not to the end, to this corner. It'll be a little bit before we get to the end of the blanket. So I have reached the corner, and since this corner has the stitch at the end of the row, we're going to go ahead and do the 10 instead of the 5 double crochets in the corner. So we do have the 10 double crochets, so 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, ten. So go back to the first one, grab this, pull them together, make a chain. So it's another one of those little little holes there. And uh, we'll do the next chain. So two, three, four, five, and I'll skip one, go on the next one, so we're back to doing every other, like, the bottom of the blanket. We skip this chain and go to this one here. So I'm, I was in this one, skipping this one, now I'm going in this one. But to do the double crochet, I have to loop over, grab it, loop, loop. Well, our skein of yarn here is getting a little less. Uh, we might have to start pulling out some knots where the yarn is coming together like that. And uh, we'll see if we have enough to finish the row and finish it off. And if not, then I do have more skeins of yarn that we can add together and tie off and figure it out. So we're we're back, and uh, I've been I've been crocheting some. We're we're getting we're getting further. Um, so let's not lose that. But uh, we're getting pretty close into the end of this skein. So sometimes when it gets a little knotted up like this, I start taking the end and rolling it up in a ball, so that when I'm crocheting this last part. I'm not constantly stopping to unravel yarn. So taking a little bit of time here to kind of unroll it so that I don't have to keep unknotting, untying the end here. Uh, when it gets to be this, this low. So sometimes it it works out fine and you don't have to roll it up in a ball, but sometimes it, it's just easier. Seems like it might be a time saver. Maybe, maybe not. But we'll, we'll roll this up in a ball. Good thing Dusty Stripes Klimkowski is not over here at the moment, or else he would be all up in my grill, trying 
to mess with my yarn. So good thing he is off doing his own thing out and about. All right, that's that's pretty good. So we'll we'll let that be. Stick that over there and uh, get the get the yarn back going. And now it shouldn't not up on us. It'll just unroll as we keep going. So, we are just about to the end of the skein here. Uh, obviously, I am not going to make it to the end of the blanket from that skein. So close, but not quite. So, I went ahead and pulled this skein out um, to kind of splice it together here. And uh, I didn't want to use this end here because uh, once you kind of unravel it from the edge then like your skein's going all over the place and if you pull it from the middle then it just kind of like pulls from the middle pretty good doesn't mess up too much um, better than having the skein kind of roll around and having the cat attack it and everything else but I went to go pull the yarn and it kind of split off on me so first this popped out then this one popped out so something is going on here and I'm not really sure what because now this right here it's trash. So uh, here's the middle of the skein but I don't know if pulling from this end is now a bad idea or what but I did it pulled and there's the end that I already kind of pulled at. So since this end is that anyway that'll be all right we'll uh, tie these two together and uh, kind of weave it in so that it hides in there and will kind of give us enough length to kind of hide it and we can cut it off if we want to so let's keep going That's four, and we're going to end up weaving this in here. So we actually did a decent job of kind of weaving this in here. Um, I might try to kind of hide it a little bit more since it's kind of pulling out. Um, but we'll we'll do another another popcorn or two and then then tackle that. Well, now that's interesting. This whole little thing right here popped out of there, and it's not attached. Now that's that's odd. Um, hmm. 
I probably could have used this instead. Um, I'll just keep going. I'll use that for a different project. I can always tie yarn together. Uh, didn't even realize that that had, uh, was in there and wasn't attached. pull that out. See if we can kind of weave this in here. So close to the end and the battery is dying. So I am this far away from the end of the blanket and being done. So pretty close. The majority of what I've been doing is pulling <laughs> the yarn from the skein and trying to get it to come so that I can use it. and. Uh, so let's finish up the last little bit here. here. So we've got the last few stitches and technically I'm supposed to go in here. So let's go in here. So these are two that I did for the corner. So let's go ahead and popcorn this one. And then let's do this and do it correctly. I'll just restart that. Um, one. Okay, so I'm going to use these two in my 10. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Alright, so we're going to use those as the 10. So we're going to slip 
stitch that and slip stitch that and we're gonna go ahead and come back over here pull these together in here so that this corner looks like all the rest of our corners so my only concern is this right here uh, I guess that is how all of them are so I'm, I'm not concerned never mind it just is longer than the rest of them so it seems different but it's not so all right we've We've ended our corner. Dusty Stripes is coming to see us again. We're getting a low battery warning. Cat is moving around the camera. And uh, we're, we're ready to finish this off. So let's get our scissors before the battery dies. Cut that. Put that away. Pull that where that's tight in there and now we just weave this in and hide it among all the rest so thank you for watching this episode of crane crocheting finishing up the blanket that was a long time in the making just because i had other stuff to do and didn't have anybody to give it to and so i held off on finishing it but we have now finished it and we're gonna continue its life journey somewhere else so this is our third video from crane crocheting this one is not live but I'm sure you all appreciate that fact because it would have been a whole lot longer on your part had it been live. So enjoy our videos. Enjoy our little popcorn stitch here with our little popcorns. <laughs>